down to the basic impression from which all of these things have emerged. Again, this is good old-fashioned, apprehensive representation from Stoic philosophy. This is sensible communication? Sir? It's a sensible communication? Yes, it is sensible communication, right. But it won't be any through the senses, you can always go back to something that's real, and the real is always particular, and that always impresses it upon you, and therefore, this is a safe use of reason. It's a safe way to look at things. So there's differences, something wrong with the person, not There may be differences from people, but that's simply from the viewpoint that they may have a different viewpoint, and therefore they may pick up things slightly different from the particular vantage point that they're viewing it. So if they view it from here, the sense impression of these likely to make a slightly different, et cetera, et cetera, from every viewpoint. So basically, you see, um, this means then you should be able to grasp the essence of things. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean the, 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 the intelligible part of existence. You can then grasp the closer you get to your own most immediate expressions found in your most immediate experience. Now, oh. that means if we can tie in, now I'm going to move a little bit away from this, not too much. Right. Now, if you want now to communicate with another, and you're into this system, right? The thing you want to grasp is you want to describe with as much care and with as much accuracy as you can the actions of man. Sometimes called behavior. And if you can capture the actions of man in words, then you're commu co communicating to others the most intelligible part of what it is they experience. And you can capture what you are experience of their actions or behavior, and you can communicate that in words, and the closest that matches the actual event, the more you are sure and can be assured that it's true. Ah, uh, one more thing. See. Therefore, you also want to examine, you must examine, a man's words. And what you want to do, if you can see this, you see, is to see whether you can especially study with those people whose actions can be described in words and their own words about whatever it is they say always goes back to particulars and can, be, can express the curious intelligibility of the moment. That's where intelligibility is. It's in the moment, you see. And it's the purpose of man here in his everyday world to be able to act in such a way that other people can describe it, put it into words. And then when I talk about it, you can then compare my words with my actions, my behavior and my actions. And if they fit together, that's integrity. And that's integrity. Now, some men's words are obviously better than others, and some men's actions are better than others. In what sense? In the sense that they can reveal something about the man and the world we live in, and these people take on special titles, and these are the sages, these are the poets, and another group of people come in here very soon called leaders of schools. Uh, perhaps philosophical schools. For their words are the best. They're the words you want to study. Therefore, if you can then think of someone who you might want to see and to see how they function, see if you can grasp in something that they do 
some particular intelligibility and it becomes very clear in the moment, you grab that event, put it into words, and then see whether or not that person's words match continuously those unique situations that are picked up. You put them together, and that's getting close to truth. Oh. Just to help out in my own beautiful handwriting. Too small, but I'll read it. Therefore, you see, the, the words you want to find now are those words that are attributed to sages and poets. You're especially interested in those events in the sages and poets' life that reveal most clearly in antidotes, their own intelligibility, their own intelligibility. Now you're going for the intelligibility in the everyday world to the intelligibility within themselves. They're the words worth studying. Okay? And this is indeed a chart of the principal ideas of Stoicism, you see. First, you study the attributed sayings of the sages, the poets, the founders of different schools. And there's a set of them, and I would urge you sometime, if you have some time, to look at uh, Epicurus, Sectus, Cyrus, the Maximus of Theogenes, and especially Diogenes Laertes, who did the lives of the philosophers. He did 83 of them, and he starts, of course, with the seven sages. But what is it they're trying to do? There's a particular interesting thing they're trying to capture. Our culture and all everything it looks like that we do on advertising, which maps a good deal of what we think and feel, is a mask. Everyone should have a good mask, a persona, a personality. That's our culture. Have a good personality. Wherever you really are, cover it up, hide it up, make it look good, get the right clothes, get the right labels on your, et cetera, and act and behave in such a way and you have a personality. With these people, however, there's a different word and what they're struggling to create is character. And that's what, they're after character. Most important, that means they want to go to one more idea behind this, all right? Patterns, ah, say patterns. You don't want to study someone who just breaks through once in a while and comes out with something intelligible and a fine saying. You want to make sure that a whole pattern of their actions follows a certain model and their words fit it and it reveals the intelligibility of themselves. Then you can say that person has a character. He has character. He's worth studying. A man of character is most important. So then, <clears throat> what do you do with such a person? And how do they teach? I, I like to make the comparison between these people. These are Stoics. And sometimes they take on the form of a cynic. A cynic is just uh, more personalistic in respect to his own philosophy. He doesn't deviate formally from a Stoic. But uh, if you met a monkey who was interested in leading a pack of monkeys, sir, what do you think that monkey might say to make clear to the other monkeys that he, in fact, should lead the pack? I know where the bananas are. Good, good. <laughs> Let's try another one, all right? <laughs> Sir, right? what do you think Theseus said when he returned home, sailing home, and he forgot to put up the black sails, remember? And therefore, since he forgot it, his father died, thinking that his son had lost his life in the in the battle with the Minotaur. Therefore, as he got off the ship and someone told him his father died because of that oversight, he most likely would have said, I guess I'll have to be king. All right. <laughs> Try it. Okay. Same question. Same question, either one. You got two. 